In the world of high technology, cars are now being considered part of that technological world. I'd like to introduce you to a St. Catharines native who is on the forefront of developing a brand new electric car. It's called Canoe. The co-founder of the company, Phil Weicker, joins us. Phil, welcome to the program. Thank you. Phil, let's talk about Canoe. How did you get involved in developing cars? I know you have an engineering background from McMaster University, but how did your expertise make its way into vehicles? I moved to California in 2008, which was um, the first of a few startup companies in the electric vehicle space. Since then, I've had a number of, of, of positions uh, in, in different types of companies, developing batteries, developing components, uh, and then developing uh, com uh, complete uh, complete vehicles. Your main focus on Canoe is the battery technology that keeps the car running, am I correct? Uh, yeah, so my role, I'm in charge of uh, propulsion and electronics at Canoe. Uh, so I lead a team of over 100 engineers and we're responsible for all of the components that make the car drive. Uh, I'm also a founding member of the company, uh, so I've been around since our, our very first day in late 2017. Um, and we built uh, our entire powertrain in-house, uh, so it's certainly been a major undertaking. One of the things that is very interesting about your company, besides the car itself, which really breaks the mold as far as what we're used to when we uh, get into a car, but it's, it's also a subscription model where you're not trying to sell these cars to people, you're having people subscribe to them. How did you and your team come up with that idea? Yeah, I think I think we tried to think about the way that we would uh, use cars in the future. Uh, we think that we subscribe to everything else in our lives, whether it's um, television or uh, online services or, or uh, home delivery for products. Uh, subscriptions in e-commerce markets uh, have increased 100% year over year for the past five years. Uh, past five years in a row. Uh, on top of that, uh, dealerships and traditional ownership models uh, we think are, are, are a huge pain point for for customers. Um, we would provide uh, with our membership 24-hour access to a vehicle like you, you know, like you would have now if you owned it. Uh, but we would also include maintenance, registration, access to insurance, uh, and charging, and, uh, and more, all for kind of one monthly fee with, without a long-term commitment. When the car is ready and when you're ready to launch that subscription service, are you concentrating it in the Los Angeles area? And when do you think you would roll it out into, or how long would it take, do you think, to roll it out into a wider range of geographic locations? We're going to address our launch plan city by city or metro region by metro region. Uh, we will start here in, in Los Angeles, uh, but uh, we're, we're continuing to make our plans to expand uh, expand from there. And we'll let the, the data tell us where the, the, best, uh, the best locations, the best markets are for us to go into. Recently, one of the world's biggest car enthusiasts visited the Canoe headquarters. It's not your first time meeting up with Jay Leno. Take us back to 2014 with the carpool development. That was a lot of fun, yes. Jay obviously has a, a great passion for custom vehicles. Uh, we were able to, to visit his, uh, his collection. He has hundreds of cars, hundreds of motorcycles, um, all of which are, um, are very unique. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we uh, it's, uh, I guess it's not, uh, not, not everybody is lucky to have um, him drive not only one, but uh, two vehicles that you've had a, a major hand in creating. Back in 2014, you and a partner installed this hot tub in a Cadillac DeVille. What possessed you to do that and go for the world record as the world's fastest hot tub? Uh, I think we can blame an article in the Globe and Mail uh, circa early 2000s and uh, said something like, nobody sets world records anymore. After reading that and uh, I guess a lot of a lot of hubris, we decided that uh, that, that was the that, that was the path that we should uh, we should be on. So yeah, we uh, we um, we were able to do that. We uh, we set the official Guinness World Record for the fastest self-propelled hot tub. What is it like getting coverage in magazines like Wired, Car and Driver? All of these varying 
different news outlets really wanting to learn more about what Canoe is doing. Launching a new car, if you get sort of 50% positive reviews, I think generally that's, uh, that's seen as very good. Um, and I can say we had probably one of the, the best launches. I think, um, you know, we, we, um, we tried to do something different and that's always risky. Uh, but I think at a time when more and more cars are starting to look the same, people were excited to see, uh, to see us try something different. So uh, there are always negative people, but uh, I guess that's just what comes with uh, putting something out into the public. You mentioned Tesla. Tesla has really made its name selling electric vehicles. Lots of success, but their vehicles are more traditional in their seating patterns. The canoe is completely out there, very different. Yeah, yeah, that, I think that's it. You know, I think that um, we tried to um, we tried to think about um, a new a new way to imagine the space inside the car, um, and and we we thought that you know whether you started with the uh, the station wagon, and then the minivan, and most recently the SUV. Um, you know, everyone's kind of always wanted more more space. Um, so we're we're kind of thinking about sort of the post SUV world and really how to use that uh, that interior, you know, large interior space without a, a large exterior footprint. So uh, we we want something that uh, you know really is um, is kind of the the best customer experience possible and. Uh, we had to, um, that was definitely harder uh, harder than it looks. Obviously a complete rethink of the whole vehicle, uh, including the components that I'm responsible for. We're hoping that that kind of defines the next, uh, you know, the, the next evolution in, in how we, uh, we look at the space inside the vehicle. Is there any idea of making the, or any plans, I guess, to make the canoe an autonomous vehicle eventually? We definitely are, um, well aware of all the various uh, technologies for autonomy. Uh, we expect that we would be uh, competitive with other vehicles in the market in terms of driver assistance features. And there's lots of companies working on, on those types of vehicles and those types of technologies. But our first vehicle, like I said, will be competitive with, with what's available uh, right now, yeah. Thanks for joining us today, Phil. We'll be watching the progress of the company. Can't wait to see it be launched uh, eventually. Again, thanks for joining us. I know it's a, a three-hour time difference down in LA, so we really appreciate it. That's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm up early. I got lots to do, so.